Hey, what's up, YouTube? College Lefty Gaming, and today I have for you guys a gameplay of Ranked Seasons. Uh, probably one of the better comebacks that I've made to start with. My record for Ranked Seasons is 53 and 11, and I kind of wanted to start this video off by showing you guys some uh, some of my squad here, some of the players that I do have. I kind of went over it in the last live stream a little bit, and I wanted to make sure I have a video that shows like some of the players that I have currently. So I'm gonna kind of go over each position and show like mostly like the diamonds, golds, and silvers. So I'm not gonna go too far in depth with some of the other cards like deeper, but I wanna show you guys which, which cards I have available and some of the options. I really like the 87 overall Chris Davis from the Orioles team epic, as well as that V-Mart. I don't really like uh, that Paul Molitor card, the Orlando Cepeda or Eric Karos, but I, I, like the, I like to use Chase Utley at second or first base as well. Have that Conquest Extreme Dozier. I use Chris Bryant at third base. A couple other cards like that, Harmon Killebrew. I got a pretty good amount of shortstops. I like using Machado and Correa. Ozzy Smith when Machado's down or, or whatever. Got that 85 chipper, not even on the squad. 85 Carlos Gomez, haven't tried him out yet either. Got a couple George Springers. I think he's on Diamond Watch as well as like Garrett Cole and James Paxson, a couple other guys that could potentially go Diamond this next roster update. Outfield is pretty stacked there. I don't have Jay Buhner on the squad, but I kind of wanted to also show that I've done I've done all the programs and all the missions. I know I've done a video on it, but if you're new and, and didn't know that I've completed all that stuff, that's how I got to a level 100 diamond and everything. Uh, it gives you a lot of XP. I have a lot of tickets through doing that. I've spent uh, quite a few tickets as well. But here we're going to jump into a game. We're down 5 nothing in the top of the ninth inning, down to our final three outs. And here the opponent, It was I was playing against a Twitch streamer, and I pretty much was messaging him, telling him, like, dude, I, no matter what in this game, you could throw it anywhere, and I'm not hitting it. Like, I was just hitting it right to his guys. Didn't score until there. He threw a pitch right down the middle. I didn't even know if he, he threw it or not. But that kind of started up this, this rally a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it was a pretty crazy game. A lot, I had a lot of flyouts to the warning track, and a lot of balls like this where they kind of look squared up. It's kind of borderline. I wasn't sure if I was under it or what. The PCI was 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 under it definitely, and and had had a lot of uh, situations like this too, where I was just missing the ball, and that was that was the case. And and that Cole Hamels was pitching the Diamond 85. Cole Hamels, he was dealing the whole time against me. Very good opponent. He's a Tigers fan. I was just saying like, dude, it seems like you're getting lucky, but but here we're starting to make a comeback. Get another two run homer there, and he was messaging me saying like. You're coming, like it, you're coming back. Saying, like, I didn't think he was after that first pitch down the middle to Matt Kemp. He was trying after that. So, I, I mean, it. He did say it was his own fault for for throwing it down down the middle there. Here, I think he messaged me saying his controller died. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, like something happened with his controller. I was confused, but the guy was really cool, cool dude. And we talked after after the game and kind of a little bit during the game. So, pretty interesting here. Um, got Mike Napoli up at the plate, catcher. He brings in Trevor Hoffman, which that's still a good matchup for Napoli, but I was like, you know what? I got to make a move right here. It, I'm down two runs. I don't have an extra catcher. I just bring in Chris Davis anyways. I'm like, I got I to gotta try, try to tie up this game with one swing of the bat. Whatever it is, I'm looking for something over the plate. And he throws a pitch, and it, um, Chris Davis hits a moonshot. I don't even know what pitch that was. I think it was a slider, hanging slider. That was a power swing, no doubter. Just squared it up perfect. And, uh, oh, it was a circle change up. Hanging circle change up, squared it up perfectly to tie up the game. And here I thought I, I thought I hit another one to take the lead here. But there we <laughs> right to the track, 408, right to the track. But we were down four, five to one and scored four runs there to tie it, or five runs actually, but four with two outs. So a pretty crazy game. Then we just get one in the next inning, the 10th inning, a home run down the left field line, 311, 311 feet for a home run. I mean, I was hitting the ball well the whole game. I just wasn't getting rewarded until I was not getting rewarded until I did hit that one home run with Matt Kemp. There we almost got another one. Brings up the created player. And I mean, I, the PCI was off on that one, but this one was not off. And I power swung once again. And that one, I mean, I was, I was hitting the ball like that consistently for most of the game. Just wasn't inconsistent on rewarding me. But here we bring in Eric Gagne up by two runs. This guy was like, I can't, I can't even believe what, what just happened. And uh, he had a few runs, or he had a few guys square up the ball in like the bottom of the ninth, as well as 
the bottom of it this inning right here so he squared up a, a couple good pitches sent me some screenshots of some feedback and i was just saying dude like this game goes either way but uh i definitely wanted to check his stuff out on twitch he's He's a good opponent and had a lot of fun playing that game, even though it definitely was frustrating for most of the game there. As the box score shows, we had uh, five runs in the ninth, two in the tenth, one at seven to five. Crazy game. Actually out hit the guy, but I felt like I was I was keeping up with him. It should have been a close game the whole time. I felt like and uh, yeah, he did hit a three run homer with Gary Sanchez there in the middle of the game that I didn't show, but it was just a really long game. Didn't quite get, capture the whole gameplay, so I wanted to just. Uh, show the highlight there of the that comeback here we're going to jump into another game going up against another good opponent definitely has a, a grind squad budget squad there jd martinez being his most expensive card and uh i really like using this johnny cueto uh, in this game i kind of i kind of was over aggressive and uh i i kind of made some stupid stupid manager uh moves throughout this game here you'll see it right here as i uh throw a two seam right down the middle and George Springer hits it out puts me down by one run and I had already I played this game pretty much right after that last game and I was I was really uh, wondering like the feedback and stuff if it was going to be as inconsistent so I kind of was going at it by just trying to get a couple runs here in the beginning of the game I don't really know what I was thinking honestly like here I, I pinch ran Napoli this is kind of what I'm talking about took, it, took out Napoli right away and uh, just make a dumb base running move. Got a bad jump there on a fastball inside, gets thrown out there, kind of run myself out of an inning. Really stupid. I mean, if it works, if it works, it's probably a tie game, but that didn't work there. And then I have to go to my bullpen because I did take out Johnny Cueto following up Mike Napoli, and that was pretty dumb as well. So, and then, I mean, Goose Gossage comes in, gives up a triple to, to start up the next inning. I mean, with one out, of course just kind of have to piece it together with the bullpen he does go up another run to take we take a two run deficit but at the same time it's like I, i'm kind of feeling okay it's the fourth inning a lot of game left my bullpen wasn't tired at all I had a full fully rested bullpen but i kind of treated this game like it was like a, a do or die game and it really wasn't i mean i felt like i was hitting the ball well and it, sometimes i just wasn't getting rewarded so i kind of wanted to just go at it any way i could try to score any way possible and it didn't work out but but there we get a home run with mike trout that was huge he, he's got a couple guys that I was I wasn't sure I didn't realize he had this Glaber Torres, Glaber Torres in his, in his lineup who has been doing really well in real life, but just not that good of a card in the game. I kind of wanted to show a little bit of a pitch sequence there with Billy Wagner. Haven't got too much gameplay out there with him, but um, since I did take out Mike Napoli, Victor Martinez is up to the dish. He hits a, a double end of the gap for anybody else but him. He has 15 speed, so that's going to be a, a nice single one hop off the ball 100 and something mile an hour hit but that brings up Manny Machado who uh, has a pretty decent at bat here I, I want to say I wanted to show more pitches than the at bat than I normally do because it was a pretty intense situation I probably was over aggressive there swinging at the first two pitches both both really good play sliders but here he kind of leaves one 0-2 in a bad spot there hanging curveball Machado hits it out I sat on it it was a regular X swing and just had a good exit velocity there. That wasn't the PCI feedback from that inning. That was uh, the previous batter of this inning. The two outs though, Bryce Harper hits one dead center on a power swing. This this following PCI feedback is the is the Bryce Harper swing. So I was just still a little bit under it, but Roberto Osuna kind of hung that slurve there a little bit. Carlos Correa, who I got for my World Series awards, ripping a base hit up the middle. I really like that card a lot using, using him since I got him. That brings up Chris Bryant with a 1-1 one, one count, two outs, and throws a cutter middle middle away, and Chris Bryant is all over that one. Crushing it, pulling into the left field uh, bleachers. And I kind of wanted to show uh, that feedback right there real quick before I jumped into the next scene. It's a pretty good feedback, similar to the other one. I mean, here we get a, a pretty similar feedback, I want to say, but a different result. Just a little bit under that one, and flies out to the warning track, the wall there. Short porch in left field, but unable to get it. This guy, I guess, kind of got a little bit under that one. Same with this. Wanted to show another hit. I mean, I've been I've been on the ball. I've been on, I've been hitting well at the plate. Just sometimes I don't get rewarded like there, but it is what it is. So you just got to try to hit the ball well every at bat, and and hopefully you do get rewarded more often than not. So 
I mean, especially it does help going up against a team that's that's not as, as powerful as my team, even though this guy does have a lot of budget guys that do have power. I, I felt like my lineup was a little bit overmatched. I mean, let me know what you guys think. I, I think uh, anytime I go up against the guys with like gold and, and stuff in their lineup, I mean, most of those gold cards are good, like Bellinger, Sanchez, J.D. Martinez was a gold. I could tell this guy was was uh, definitely has like a budget grind squad team. Doesn't play the game nearly as much as I do. He's a level 70-something bronze, but still a good player. So even with the level, can never underestimate your opponents. It was a good game. He was up for most of it. I was able to score one one run, two runs, and three runs in, in consecutive innings there in the middle of the game. And here I'm, I'm looking pretty good with Eric Gagne. That's the thing, too, is my bullpen is uh, not all diamond out, but, but for the most part, I got pretty good pitchers that I feel comfortable using. And... Uh, I feel like I got the golds, the golds that I do have, they do pitch like diamonds. So I think that's a, a huge thing for ranked seasons. But yeah, I mean, if you don't have Gary Sanchez and need a budget catcher, this Wilson Contreras is, an, is another really good option. He doesn't really have the, he has the kind of the opposite quirks as Sanchez does. He's got the breaking ball instead of the fastball. So just a little bit of an option there. I mean, he did get downgraded and then upgraded. So SDS has been editing him a little bit and he might continue to get some upgrades and downgrades throughout the season depending on how he does But anyways, this uh, Victor Robles card has been really good against me. Uh, I played uh, Turbo Turbo who also had him and just the infield hits the speed threat that he brings to the, to the table and that contact is really good Here we're able to get him with the curveball right down the middle Eric Gagne is just just crazy good with that 95 fastball on the 70 something mile an hour curve that's 24 mile an hour difference or whatever it is it's just unbelievable Machado gets the player of the game there with two hits one homer two RBIs and uh, move up to 772 rating there quite a few points for playing a guy a little bit below us and that, that was a pretty good game there I'm looking forward to making the push into uh, championship series stay tuned for the next live stream take it easy guys have a good day